So this film is all about the peer mentoring system here at Bressing. And what we're going to try and look at is what actually is mentoring, why we do it, what the distinction between coaching and mentoring is, how to get started, what some of the key skills you need as a mentor are, and a few practical tips too. So firstly, what is mentoring? Well, mentoring in the workplace often describes a relationship in which a more experienced colleague can use his or her greater knowledge or understanding of the work or workplace to support the development of a more junior or inexperienced member of staff. Peer mentoring means that this relationship is happening with people at a similar level. For instance, two people at associate level. So it's not a direct line management relationship, although the outcome in terms of goals and personal development may be very similar. Why do we mentor? Well, it can have various different positive effects, but in particular, it can help with that early navigation, the induction, helping people get up to speed, feel part of a new organization, and feel supported. It aids learning and development, enhancing new skills and knowledge, and it also helps build confidence. Well, what are the benefits? The benefits work three ways. They work for the mentee, they work for the mentor, and they also work for the company themselves. The mentee gets to learn new technical and interpersonal skills and knowledge. They learn more effectively and more quickly than would have been the case if they were working alone. They pick up on the company culture, they increase their confidence and self-awareness, and they get a different perspective. And this perspective is something that the mentor also gets. Alongside developing a new skill set, improving their self-awareness, their self-esteem, and thinking about new ways of approaching different issues. And for the company, you get improved retention, increased knowledge management, improved communication, and more effective, focused, motivated team managers. What is the difference between mentoring and coaching? Well, both have a role to play. A coach tends to be something that is more short term, whereas mentoring is a longer term approach and is more holistic. And perhaps it's worth looking at some of the distinctions between coaching and mentoring because both have a part to play in the relationship that a mentee can have with a mentor. So the initial starting point is thinking about how long things last. Coaching tends to be more short term, whereas mentoring is long term. Coaching is about simple tasks, whereas mentoring can often be more abstract, thinking about the approach or the frame of mind. Mentoring is going for this thinking and more broad ranging rather than just the targeted coaching approach. Coaching involves more teaching, mentoring more listening. Mentoring is a little bit more detached than the day to day management. And the mentoring is more organic. A good way of thinking about getting started on mentoring is this visual puzzle. How would you join these nine dots using four straight lines without taking your pen off the page? You might have a bit of time to think about it. Well, this is probably not how to do it because I've managed to take my pen off the page, but this is the shape you should end up with. And what it kind of illustrates is that sometimes you need to think outside of the box with mentoring. Everyone will have their comfort zone, but mentoring enables people to think about some of the challenges and some of the ideas that they'd like to explore beyond that. And if you're going to help people cope with these challenges and these changes, you need to listen you need to ask the right questions. You need to encourage them to explain their thinking and their ideas. You're empowering them and you need to be there for them. And this brings us to the key skills that you need if you're going to be an effective mentor. When you break communication down into its constituent parts, it's fairly alarming just what takes the most significance. Words make up just 7%.
tone of voice, 38%. Body language, a massive 55% of all communication. And by that, we're thinking about posture, mirroring, eye contact, your facial expressions, gestures, picking noses. Tone of voice can be to do with pace, volume, and intonation. Only 7% is what you actually say. So you need to think about this. You also really need to think about how you listen. Active listening is a lot more than just listening to someone. You have to be very deliberate about what it is and how it is you're going to listen. And some of the key skills in active listening are that you show interest verbally and, as we've just said, non-verbally. You encourage the, your mentee to explain. You don't judge. You try and see things from their perspective, through their eyes. What you don't do is make it all about you. The kind of questions that you answer are also really important. There is a space for closed questions. Sometimes if you're simply wanting a yes, no, or you're wanting a fact to be confirmed, ask those closed questions. But where possible, think about those W questions, what, who, where, why, because open questions really encourage a conversation and they reveal far more about what someone's thinking and what they're feeling. And what open questions can lead to is the ability to summarise. Because if you can start to repeat back phrases using the same language that your mentee is using, if you can start to probe so that you really understand what they mean by certain things, what they really think, how they want to explain something, you can then summarise their ideas and their thoughts. Constructive feedback is vital. It builds and improves the relationship, shows you value the relationship, it shows a belief that things can improve, and you need to think about the key principles. Be direct. Be sincere. Make sure you're basing all of your bits of advice and thoughts on evidence. Make it face-to-face, -face, make it appreciative, and make it positive. People need to come away with something really concrete. Now, when it comes to targets, it's very worthwhile thinking about the SMART approach. The SMART approach is all about making targets very specific, very measurable, achievable, realistic, or relevant, and within a particular time frame. And this means that these targets, these goals, can be achieved and measured in a really concrete way. Now, in order to do this, you may need to use certain models, and one of the most effective models is the GROW model. There's a separate podcast all about this, but very, very briefly, what the GROW model is all about is about setting a goal and then thinking about the reality. What might stand in the way of achieving that goal? What might some of the problems be? What are some of the options available to you to overcome those? And what are you actually going to do? to achieve that goal. Mentoring shouldn't be a really complicated, paperwork heavy process, far from it. But it is worth having two crucial bits of paperwork. First is a contract. You can talk about the frequency, duration, location, communication, confidentiality, and the end game if you want to end the mentoring relationship. And the second is a checklist that gives you a very simple record of what your key aims are, what your actions are, what your outcomes are, and when this all happened. Peer mentoring can make a really positive difference to a work environment, so good luck.